Welcome to this program in the Our Finger Lakes History Series. I am Seneca County historian Walter Gable. This program deals with octagon houses, an architectural style that became popular in the United States, especially in New York State, including the Finger Lakes in the mid-19th century, and it was a style popularized by a Finger Lakes person. Shown here are several examples of octagon houses built in that time period. Six of these are in the Finger Lakes and two are elsewhere. Each will be shown in greater detail in this program. Before getting into real details about an octagon house and their history, I want you to understand that the octagon house was a unique architectural style in that it was an eight-sided building rather than rectangular, with the result that rooms typically did not have right angles. This is a typical floor plan for the main floor of an octagon house. You will note that for each of the main rooms, the shape of the room is not a rectangle, but rather the walls have several angles. You will see, however, in this program that there are ways to have the rooms be rectangular without the angularity of walls shown in this diagram. This is a still more detailed first floor plan for an octagon house. You will note that the rooms are ample in size and you will see that there are numerous closets. This is a more detailed example in which you see the angular walls of the four main rooms. You will also note that there are several other small rooms and closets on this floor. A typical octagon house had a basement, a main floor, a second floor of bedrooms, a cupola in the center of the house, and a veranda or porch that often went all the way around the main floor of the house. You would be inclined to call this a two-story house, but in actuality it could be well called a five-story house, consisting of basement, the two main floors, the attic, and then the cupola. Frequently, the typical octagon house would have a basement raised up more out of the ground, and then there would be a sub-basement below that basement. When this was true, the octagon house could probably be called a six-story house. Orson Squire Fowler who popularized the building of octagon houses, pointed out that there were several advantages of the octagon house over a conventional rectangular shaped house. For the same total amount of exterior wall feet, an octagon house had more interior square feet than a rectangular house had. This should enable an octagon house to have less heating expense in cold weather. Having windows on eight sides rather than four increases the potential for natural light inside and for natural cooling in hot weather. This octagon house in Watertown, Wisconsin can be considered a case study example of the many features of an octagon house. Each of the eight sides is 50 feet long. This is larger than the typical octagon house. But there are very detailed plans about this house and detailed history, so it can be used to enhance our understanding of octagon houses. You can see that this house had three main floors, in addition to the basement and the attic and then the cupola. Here you see the floor plans for the first floor 
and the ground floor. Note the angularity of some rooms. Here you see the floor plans for the bedrooms that are on the second and third floors. Note how you have to go through a large bedroom to get to another large bedroom, common until more recent times. Note the angularity of the various small bedrooms on both floors, with the large bedrooms having very little angularity. Note also the central spiral staircase for this house. Here I have listed some of the other features typical of an octagon house. You will note that some of the features, such as central heating and filtering of collected rainwater, were, modern, were rather modern for their time before the Civil War. Now shown here is a picture of Orson Squire Fowler born in Cohocton, New York, here in the Finger Lakes. Octagon houses became popular in the 1850s because of Orson Squire Fowler. In 1848, he wrote a book advocating the building of octagon houses and providing very practical guidance in actually building octagon houses. Orson Squire Fowler was very much a part of the reform movements in the United States before the Civil War. Here are listed many of the reform ideas of the antebellum America time period. You were probably well aware of the first several, abolition or anti-slavery, women's rights, and temperance. Homeopathy became very popular especially the ideas of having people exposed to more fresh air and the use of herbs for medical treatment. Another reformist idea was that of phrenology, in which a person could examine the shape and size of the human head of a person to determine that person's character and mental abilities. Fowler and his brother were both phrenologists with a base office in New York City and doing much speaking on phrenology throughout the United States. At the right you see an image of the different character sections of the cranium. A few years ago during convention days here in Seneca Falls, I had a trained phrenologist who I didn't know read my head, and she was right on in saying that I had great mathematics ability but did not use it professionally, and that I had musical interests and ability. Spot on, even though I had never seen that phrenologist before. So the idea of building houses in the octagon shape fit right in with these new reform ideas. There is especially a strong link with homeopathic medicine in that octagon houses with their eight sides allowed for more window exposure to whatever direction in which the wind was blowing. Orson Fowler himself was an advocate of many of these reformist ideas, especially women's rights, phrenology, and octagon houses. Not surprisingly, Fowler built himself an octagon house. Shown here is a colorized drawing at upper left and a lithograph bottom right of the octagon house that Fowler built at Fishkill, New York on the Hudson River. However, it was demolished over 100 years ago. The very location of this house was a fit for the homeopathic principle of maximizing exposure to fresh air. When it came to construction, Fowler didn't skimp. 
His octagon house consisted of three main floors, a full above-ground basement, and a glass-enclosed cupola atop a flat roof. Overall, it was at least 60 feet high and commanded a view of the Hudson River. Each of its eight sides was 32 feet long, so the floor space per floor was over 3,000 square feet. A central staircase led to the second and third floors, each with eight bedrooms plus dressing rooms and triangular-shaped closets, and then ultimately all the way up to the cupola. The exterior walls were a kind of poured concrete, a new technology quickly embraced by Fowler. Outside the walls, verandas connected by their own staircase ringed each of the three floors. These are the floor plans to each of the three floors in Fowler's octagon house. You will probably note how Fowler tried to minimize the angularity of the main rooms on the first and second floors. Shown here is the Armour Steiner Octagon House. It is one of the most visually unique homes in the entire world. It is the only known fully domed octagonal residence in the world. In 1872, Joseph Steiner, a prominent New York City tea merchant, purchased the much simpler house on the property, altered it by adding to it the basic features of an octagon house and then this dome. The house is open to the public. The largest still standing octagon house in the United States is this Longwood Mansion at Natchez, Mississippi. It was built in 1860 by Holler Nutt as a home for his family, which included his wife and eight children. It was left unfinished, however, with the outbreak of the Civil War in 1861 but the Nutt family lived in the basement area fairly comfortably during the war. Holler Nutt lost his personal fortune in the war, and he died of pneumonia in 1864, so the house was never completed. As to the floor plan of the main floor of the house, you can see that it has the basic octagon or eight-sided shape but four of the sides are rooms that extend out beyond the basic shell of the house with verandas in between those exist extended rooms. The house was to have 32 rooms, 26 fireplaces, 115 doors, 96 columns, and a total of 30,000 square feet of living space. The more than one million bricks used to build this house were all made on the grounds of the estate. This house is also open to the public. Now to show some octagon buildings in the Finger Lakes. It is not clear just how many octagon houses are still standing in the entire United States. We know a few thousand were built with one source saying that over 2,000 are still standing. At least 68 have been placed on the National Register. Another source says that about 1,000 were built in the East and Midwest in the 1850s and 1860s. The Geneva Historical Society says that 173 were built in New York State. A current national source says there are 174 still standing in New York State. It should not be surprising that many octagon houses were built in the Finger Lakes region, as it was a main area of the reform movements of the antebellum period, and that it was an area of great economic growth at the time that this architectural style of architecture octagon houses was very much in fashion style. 
Isaiah Wilcox built this house in 1856, and it incorporates many of the ideas suggested by Orson Squire Fowler. It is a rather simple octagon house in its basic style. Two stories, cupola, circular staircase from basement to cupola, and veranda porch all around. The house actually can be called six stories, from the sub-basement all the way up to the cupola. The house was constructed using materials found on the Wilcox farm, including wood, stone, and bricks. Also, the masons made their own mortar. It took two and a half years to build this, and it was finished in 1856. The walls are made of cobblestones and concrete. The sub-basement is where the servants would store and prepare food. The walls there in the sub-basement are 22 inches thick, making it a perfect cold storage area to keep produce, meat, and dairy products. Each of the eight sides is 17 feet long. The house consists of 10 square rooms and 8 triangular rooms. There are no fireplaces in this house. The house was comfortably heated by cast iron, wood, and coal stoves on the main floor. The family moved their sleeping quarters down to the main floor during the coldest of the winter months, and the second floor rooms were simply closed off. The upstairs bathroom has a sink and a bathtub whose water was pumped into the house by a windmill located in the backyard. The water came into the basement where it was heated by the servants and then the servants carried the water all the way up the several floors to pour it into the sink or tub. The pantry and the kitchen were located on the basement level with the door opening out to the backyard. The original front door was built extra wide to accommodate female guests who arrived dressed in their fancy hooped skirts. This house is open to the public seasonally. This is the floor plan of the main floor of the house. Note the veranda around the entire house, but only for the first floor. Look carefully to note that the main floor rooms have angles, especially along the interior walls. Note also the central spiral staircase. This is a parlor scene from the Bobana website of octagonal houses. This house was built by Erastus Hyde in Friendship, New York, about 1870. Mr. Hyde was a farmer in Friendship who became a corporal in the Civil War, returned to farming after the war. He later became a homeopathic physician. So once again, you can see a tie-in with the reformist ideas I mentioned earlier. In 1978, the Genesee Country Village acquired the then vacant house and moved it to their village. The house has four main rooms on the first floor, a parlor, a music room, a dining room, and a kitchen. Here, however, you see the floor plan of this house while it was owned by the doctor in Friendship, New York. You see a doctor's office upper right, which will be converted into a dining room. You will note that a small room off the doctor's room was an herb room in which Dr. Hyde stored his herbs that he used for his homeopathic medical practice. This is a view of the parlor as it looks today at Genesee Country Village. Note the angularity in the wall in, in the background. Look behind the marble top table that's in the center of the room. This is the music room. 
Here, once again, you can clearly see the angularity of the wall in the background. This is the dining room with the angled wall shown in the background. I trust you have been noticing the extensive amount of sunlight in each of these rooms. I took these pictures on Friday, October 9th, 2020, so it was not on a mid-summer day. In this view of the kitchen, you don't see the angularity of the interior wall, which is actually behind me as I took this picture. I didn't take this picture of the staircase in the center of the house, but the central staircase led all the way up to the cupola. It provided light and circulated the air throughout the center of the house. This stone and stucco octagon house was built by T. M. Younglove in 1859. T.M. Younglove, whose father was one of the first to settle per permanently in the area in 1807, was a pillar of the burgeoning Pleasant Valley community. He had a stake in the local hardware store, rebuilt the Skull House, and was a founder of Pleasant Valley Wine Company. A forward-thinking man like him required a house that reflected those principles. So he built his own eight-sided home. His descendants lived in the house until the 1960s. The 18, excuse me, the exterior walls are 18 inches thick masonry walls finished with a smooth plaster. Each of the sides is 20 feet long, finished with a wide overhanging cornice supported by sawed corbels. The roof has a flat pitch. There is a large octagonal cupola. Though the young loves have since left their unusual mansion, the octagon house still promotes wellness within its eight walls. The historic building is currently the home of the Black Sheep Inn and Spa. It is a bed and breakfast that gives many tourists a good idea of what an octagon house has been like. You can see in the floor plan for the first floor of this house how much of the expected angularity of the main rooms has been overcome by the placement of closets and storerooms. I want to add here that there was an eight-sided barn and a smokehouse but they were destroyed in the infamous July 1935 flood. Here you see the typical angularity of the interior wall of the front parlor. This is the so-called ballroom. You will note that the cupola is completely exposed to this room, rather than having the cupola be a completely separate floor in a typical octagon house. Now for Geneva. This octagon house was built in 1853 and is located at 760 Castle Street. It is one of the most spectacularly ornate of all octagon houses built in the United States in the 1850s. It is known as the Denton House today, but it has also been known as the Moore Peck House. It was built by Nehemiah Denton for the Moore family. Mr. and Mrs. Moore were newlyweds. The construction cost in 1853 was $12,000. In today's dollars, that would be over $400,000. The carpenters and bricklayers were paid a daily salary of one, day, one dollar. The ornately decorated veranda should be noted. It encircles the house. The posts and railings of this veranda are delicately wrought iron work. The house basement is built of stone. The walls of the house are brick. 
Each of the eight sides of the house is 17 and a half feet long, with two pairs of corbels for each side. The brackets or corbels are the features that appear just below the eave to make it look like the corbels are holding up the edge of the roof. In 1872, Nehemiah Denton married a Moore sister and they moved into the house. Both Nehemiah and his wife were deaf. In 1965, the then owners, Mr. and Mrs. Abraham George, put the house up for sale with an asking price of $35,000. Here I have highlighted some features of the house. The eaves have substantial overhang and have decorative brackets under these eaves. The beautiful metal veranda surrounds the basement and the first floor. Note, the basement is completely above ground. How would you like the visual appeal of an entry like this to the front door of your house? Here you see the front entrance to this magnificent octagon house. This is an old view of the front entrance staircase. It cost $12,000 to build in 1853 dollars or over $40,000 in today's dollars. The staircase takes you to the veranda and then to the entrance hall. The entrance hall is nine and a half feet wide. This picture and others have been provided to me by the current owners of the house. Unlike most typical octagon house, Sis, you will note that this house has a very large entry hall and one very large parlor rather than two smaller parlors. Note the angularity of the exterior walls for both the parlor and the dining room. On each side of the front entrance hall there are parlors. This is an interior view sometime in the past for one of the parlors. The rooms did not have angularity because of the clever use of closets and clothes presses. Because bank safe deposit boxes were not common in the 1850s, the builders of this house built two fireproof, burglar-proof safes in the basement. The house is said to have 14 rooms. When this house was built, two bathtubs were installed, making it the first house in central New York to have even one bathtub. The water was piped from a spring two miles away. This is another interior view from some time in the past. I can only provide you with this newspaper picture of the central spiral staircase, but it must have been spectacular to see. It consists of carved mahogany wood and stretches 57 steps from the basement to the cupola. Much more recently, this octagon-shaped outbuilding was constructed on the property. This is a cobblestone building that I was thrilled to see for the first time. This three-story octagon building with 55-foot sides was built in 1905 as the winter quarters of the Sig Sawtell's Carpet Circus. You can see that it was clearly built to look like a circus tent. The first floor has five large rooms and three smaller rooms. It had ten bedrooms on the second floor, each with its own closet. The octagon cupola has ten foot sides. Until a few years ago, it was an antiques shop. It's sad to see such a unique building to be so neglected now. Seymour Scott in 1900 built this octagon tower 
at Charles Point on Sodus Bay from a cottage on the property. Currently, it is owned by a Rochester couple. In this map at top, you can see the location of Charles Point in Sodus Bay. The Octagon Cottage is located on Charles Point as shown in the circa 1910 postcard image at the bottom. In 2017 and 2019, floodings in the Sodus Bay area cut off Charles Point so that it is now accessible only by boat. Rosa Fox, the current town of Huron historian, provided me the postcard shown. She said that her husband's grandfather owned the building at one time and the family raised chickens in it. In 1970, Lucille Messenger wrote about how when she was growing up, the children in the neighborhood of this octagon tower used the tower as a playhouse. Here you see both an older and a recent view of the octagon building. The first story is stone masonry followed by two wood stories. This blacksmith shop in Alloway, south of Lyons, was built by Alfred Hale in 1832. He lived in the room over the shop for a short time. So this octagon building predates the advocacy of Orson Fowler. Each side of the building is 12 and a half feet long. You will note that it was built of cobblestones. During the years when cobblestone buildings were becoming quite prevalent here in the Finger Lakes, the blacksmith shop closed in 1936. It was used as a machine shop until about 1960. There are several former Octagon country schoolhouses that are still standing today throughout the Finger Lakes. One of these is the former Dryden District School No. 5, affectionately known as the Eight Square School. It was built in 1827, long before Fowler wrote his book. It was built when octagon schools were being attributed to Quaker philosophy, that everyone is equal in the eyes of God. Each side is 12 feet 6 inches. The History Center of Tompkins County holds classes for today's ch school children in this former schoolhouse, recreating school days of circa 1892. Note the outhouse to the very right. Several octagon-shaped country schoolhouses were built, some of wood, some of brick. At the top, you see a former country schoolhouse in Hector and Schuyler County that today is a rental cottage. At the bottom, you see a country school in Locke in Cuyahoga County. The building is apparently vacant, but locals have ensured its continued existence with a recent metal roof and a sign identifying this was built in 1840. Known as the Beehive, this brick octagon was built in 1859 by Quakers to be used as a schoolhouse. It is an interesting octagon-shaped building in that it has a gabled roof rather than a flat or gently sloped roof, but there are only four gables rather than a gable peak for each of the eight sides. Each of the eight sides is 13 feet long. Note the cupola is very tall and has narrow louvered openings on each side. There are two projecting vestibule entrances, one for the boys and the other for the girls. Today it's a private residence. This Poplar Ridge house was built in 1856 by Stephen Young, who was a spiritualist another one of the reformist ideas of antebellum America. It has 1,710 square feet. The cellar walls are cobblestone. 
The house has recently been listed for sale with a listing price of about $139,000. Here you see the floor plans for both the first and second floors of the house. Note the extensive amount of angularity in several of the rooms. This is an interior view of one of the main rooms on the first floor of the house. Here you see the angularity of the walls, both interior and exterior walls. I haven't been inside this house in Cortland, but it would be interesting to see that all the rooms are square, or at least rectangular, by having corner closets absorb the angularity that is typical of rooms in an octagonal house. The house was built in 1855 by a farmer named William Burnham. The house has undergone much external change. The original masonry walls are now covered with vinyl siding. The veranda that originally went all around the house is now gone, with just a little porch on the front. Sometimes in my taking pictures of buildings, I get really lucky and see outside the current owner who is willing to take some time to share about the house. Here you see the current lady of the house talking to a neighbor. Kathy said that the central staircase opening up through the cupola provides much natural ventilation to the house. Kathy said she only turned on the central air conditioning one time, one day, this hot summer. The house was built in 1853 with a cobblestone exterior, but for many years it has had this stucco exterior. The house today lacks the original veranda that went all around the house until 1930. The property ha also has an octagonal barn. The barn has vertical boards, boards that were used for placing the stucco on the house. The interior of the barn still has the original hand-hewn beams. This octagonal house in Canandaigua was built in 1860. It is a two-story frame structure with a porch across the front three sides. Each side is 18 feet long. The usual octagonal cupola is located on the top of a flat pitched roof. Note that the windows in this cupola are a pair of windows for each of the eight sides. Note in this floor plan how it would be possible to have the doors open to have cross ventilation between the rear parlor, the front parlor, the front best vestibule, and the dining room. This oct octagon house in Naples has sides that are only 12 feet long. Note how the exterior sides are covered with vertical boards with wood battens over the joints. There probably was a cupola, but it's not there today. This is a rather small house, so you wouldn't expect many rooms on the first floor. Nevertheless, this floor plan shows how a couple living in this house could basically live on just this main floor of the house. Clearly, this is not a showplace home, for luxurious entertaining. This house in Clyde was built in 1856. You will note that new siding covers up the exterior, original exterior that is. This is a circa 1955 view of the house so you can see what the exterior looked like before vinyl siding. Here you see the original floor plan of the octagon house has undergone some change with the later addition. But still you can get a feel how the main rooms did not have 
the typical angularity to their walls. This large octagon house might have been built as early as 1850 in Williamson. It was originally built of cobblestones, but later covered with stucco. The original walls were 20 inches thick. Each side is 17 feet, 8 inches long. This has a pitched roof of about 30 degrees. The octagonal cupola is very high and has windows only on four sides. The porch across three front sides of the house was a later addition. The floor plan shows how this house has great angularity to the walls of the main rooms on the first floor. This house in Prattsburg was built in 1872 by Henry Hopkins. Because he was operating a sawmill at the time, he used only the choice pieces of lumber from his sawmill to build this house. It is a rather simple octagon house with an exterior appearance today much different from its original nature. Each of the eight sides is 17 feet, 4 inches long. Nonetheless, it is an octagonal house that still exists today. The house has several rooms on its first floor. Both the kitchen and the one parlor are rectangular, but the dining room and the other parlor have angular walls. Note also the central staircase. Here I have included the first of two quotes in summary. This quote highlights how the octagonal house idea was so characteristic of mid-19th century attitudes of reform, trying new things. It was a time of making change from long-standing practices. This quote emphasizes the importance of Orson Squire Fowler in making the building of octagon houses popular in the mid-19th century. He embraced many of the new ide beliefs emerging in the antebellum reform era. His book on the advantages of octagon houses and practical guidance for building octagon houses helped to launch this movement that resulted in many octagon houses being built. I remind you he was born in Cohocton, New York, so he is very much a product of the Finger Lakes. I also pose the question, why aren't octagon houses still being built today? But I hope you have enjoyed learning more about octagon houses. Octagon Houses and the Inspiration for Them by Orson Squire Fowler make for another important and interesting piece in our Finger Lakes history.